Uh, in this short note, we uh, would like to discuss the issue of uh, step functions okay, versus simple functions. Okay, so uh, remember from a, a purely historical point of view what happened. We have uh, the concept of Riemann integration. So we have Riemann integration. Okay, and then Lebesgue integration. The uh, <coughs> so the the, the Riemann integration is an, an old concept, extremely old concept, compared to the Lebesgue. Lebesgue is maybe late 1800, the beginning of 1900. So, so you see, it's uh, the, the 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 Riemann integration uh, has been uh, at the center of calculus, at the center of real analysis on the real line, the classical real analysis. Okay, the concept of Lebesgue integration is because of some. Uh, uh, holes, some uh, problems with the Riemann integration, okay? And uh, mainly uh, the, the problem that the people dealt with is uh, when you have uh, the concept of uh, uh, convergence of uh, uh, sequences of functions. Okay, so you take a function fn, sequence of functions fn, which converges to f. Of course here, what do we mean by convergence? Huh? So, uh, since the beginning we have two types of convergence. There are other types, of course, but I'm talking about the classical ones, okay? So we have the concept of pointwise convergence. Okay, and uniform convergence. Okay, and the, the the problem is uh, there is C uh, difference between pointwise convergence and the uniform convergence. So everything behaves very beautifully in terms of uniform convergence. Okay, but everything starts to to go bad when you are dealing with pointwise convergence. Okay, uh, for example, if you look at uh, the Dirichlet function f. Uh, from 0, 1 into R such that you get 0 if X does not belongs to Q and 1 if X belongs to Q okay so we know that this function the uh, characteristic function of the rationals on 0 between 0 and 1 or any interval in fact so this function is extremely bad okay and but what's interesting is that this function can be approximated by uh, sequence of functions approximated in one sense. It can be approximated in the sense of pointwise convergence. Okay, in the sense of pointwise convergence. Indeed, so if you take, for example, Q intersect 0, 1, we know that this set is infinite and countable. And let's call this set as R1, R2, etc. So this is your Rn. Okay, for n greater or equal than 1. And what you do you go to uh, you define fn which is uh, from 0 1 into r such that for x it gives me 0 if x does not belongs to q and 1 uh, sorry 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 ah uh, okay 0 if x is different from r1 rn and 1 if x is equal to r1 rn okay then it's very easy to see that the sequence of fn uh, converges pointwise to f okay of course the fn's are continuous okay everywhere okay except 
at R1 Rn. So th this, the, the number of points where the function Fn is discontinuous is finite. So I mean you can imagine that uh, your function is, is these Fn's are very nice from the point of view of lot of properties but uh, the f, the limit, is extremely bad. We know that, for example, that this uh, function f uh, is not, uh, is not, uh, doesn't have a limit anywhere, uh, is not Riemann integrable, etc., etc. So th this, this, this phase, this uh, failure of the Riemann integration with respect to some nice behavior for this kind of uh, functions and so on. It, it, people got uh, try try to understand where is the problem. How can we improve on this? And that was as again as I told you before. That was uh, Lebeck who offered a beautiful way, which is that you look at uh, at the heart of the Riemann integration. What is it? You, you have what's known as step functions. Okay, this is very important. Okay, in order for you to deeply understand the Riemann integrations, at the center of it is the step functions. And what is the step function? So you have this uh, function with finite. It takes finite values. Okay, the problem is these are your values, finite from 1 to n, it takes finite values. But the problem is that the inverse image of these ai's are intervals. In other words, what you have here is uh, xi, xi plus 1, and what we have is uh, the x0 or x1 is a less than x2 less than xn less than xn plus 1, which is b. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter what values phi takes at x i's at the x i's. Uh, these are just a finite number of points, so we are okay. We can uh, we can work uh, around that problem. Okay, so it's not really an issue. Uh, what's happening exactly at the x i's is not an issue. But again, this is what is a step function. Okay, so it takes finite values. Okay, and uh, the uh, values are taken over intervals. Okay. W w their union, their disjoint intervals, and their union forms your interval a, b, and here again, as I said, up to this x, i is the end point. Now, for a simple function, as we said before, for a simple function, okay, we have the same, okay, except what? That then you have e, i's, so these are the characteristic functions Okay, so it's the same. Uh, you may have the same. As, as in other words, you have uh, the range is a finite set of points, the AIs. But what you are doing here now, you are taking values on the EIs. Adding zero, you can almost assume that the union of the EIs is equal to AB here. So it's not really a problem. Okay. So uh, again, step function. The inverse image of every finite value is an interval, while uh, for a simple function, the inverse image is a measurable set, EI, a set, which can be anything. Okay? Uh, great. So uh, let us go back uh, to the. Uh, so it has some beautiful properties, the uh, step functions, they have some beautiful properties, but at the same time, they have limitations. Okay, so as we said before, and we discussed this in a previous lecture when we compared Lebesgue and Riemann, uh, the problem is, uh, uh, for example, the Dirichlet function, uh, the characteristic function of the rationals on 0, 1, the one that we discussed before, uh, is not Riemann integrable, while it is uh, Lebesgue integrable. So it, sh it shows you how uh, uh, the fact that you are moving from uh, intervals into sets, it enrich this uh, new integration or what's known as Lebesgue integration. So l l let's go back quickly just about some of the uh, properties that I would like to mention here. So first of all, uh, about uh, 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 step, fun step functions. 
okay they have some nice behavior okay and th the reason why I'm I'll be talking about this for a few minutes is it gives you an idea about what's coming for the Lebesgue integrations in other words some of the properties are inherited from the behavior of these uh, step functions they they extend to the case of simple functions okay so for example uh, let's say you have uh, so these points xi as I told you about we call them a partition so uh, what is a partition so p okay equal uh, x1 x uh, n is a partition of a b uh, if you have x1 equals a x2 x n minus 1 x n equal b so uh, or if you want another way to write it is x1 equal a less than x2 less than x n minus 1 less than x n equals b okay so now uh, the, your step function uh, with respect to this partition uh, we said that this is sigma of certain a i's key of x i x i plus 1 from i equal 1 to n minus 1 and now we define the integral okay of a to b P of x dx is equal to sigma of a i's x uh, i plus 1 minus x i from uh, 1 to n minus 1 okay in fact what's interesting is uh, that this uh, sum has nothing to do with the partition okay so for example if p1 uh, is included in p2 two partitions okay of a b okay then the two sums this sum here with respect to the partition p1 or with respect to partition p2 are exactly the same and from here uh, you can now show that for any partition in p1 and p2 even if they are not because you can go through the p1 union p2 and it gives you a third partition and you can show in fact that the sums are the same therefore it's independent of the partition okay it's very very, very beautiful I, I don't mean to do it here but it's very simple it's just you play on uh, the points uh, and you look at the sum over these intervals okay so it's not it's not really a, a hard problem okay so for example okay fine let's let's do it uh, so for example uh, if P uh, is equal this is how how we get it huh so so we said here the sum is independent of p1 and p2 it's the same okay so indeed so this is this is how you do it you take p equals what x1 xn let uh, y belongs to a b y not in p so you add one point huh? and consider now so we know that there exists i such that y is going to be between xi xi plus one and then if you take now p union y so you add one point to this partition okay so it's going to be uh, here it is so you have your a b you have your xi your xi plus one and now you have y here so that's the point you added so if you take of course your function here is constant over the interval x i x i plus one let's say the value is a i so it's gonna be uh, a i time y minus x i plus a i because it's constant over the, the, the two intervals x i plus one minus y and that is exactly a i time x i plus one minus xi and that's how you catch it you can add you keep adding say if you're just adding a finite number of points it's going to give you exactly the same sum no doubt about it okay so so some of the properties now is for example uh, some of the basic properties from what we just saw are really interesting for example the first one easy huh? so if phi is equal to sigma of ai xi xi plus 1 then 
absolute value of e is also a, s a step function and it has the value, take the absolute value of, the v of this over xi xi plus 1. So you see, and it's very easy to see that the integral from a to b of absolute value of e x dx is greater than absolute value of a to b v of x dx. So you see, this is very, very beautiful. So you see, now the properties, some of the properties of the integral of the simple step functions, step functions uh, can be obtained uh, uh, and we will see later on that, okay, this gives you properties on the uh, Riemann integral functions or the Riemann integration, and they, of course, will extend also to the Lubeck integrations, okay, via, of course, uh, the uh, uh, family of simple functions, not step functions, okay? Uh, also, for example, we can show that if phi and psi are step functions, then phi plus psi is also a step function. And the integral from a to b of phi of x plus psi of x dx, this is equal to the integral from a to b phi of x dx plus the integral from a to b psi of x dx. This is the linearity of what? Of the integral, as well as if you multiply by constant, okay? So this is the sum of two uh, step functions. Keep in mind, phi has its own partition, psi has its own partition. So what you do in order to prove this, you take the union of the two partitions and you get a partition uh, for both, for phi and psi, and that's how you, uh, uh, you obtain the integrals. Keep in mind that the integral has nothing to do with the partition, okay? So finally, before we, we close this uh, little note on uh, step functions, okay, uh, let us just recall that f, sorry, f, a function f from a, b to r is Riemann integrable if and only if there exists every epsilon for every epsilon, there exists phi, psi, two step functions such that phi is less than f, less than psi, and the integral from a to b of psi of x minus phi of x dx is less than epsilon. This is a beautiful characterization of Riemann integrability by uh, step functions. Thank you.